going back to my last video, there's one more point I want to add on uh, in the discussion of uh, whether or not Jim Harbaugh can actually coach. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Youssef. Uh, my name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar. That felt kind of strange as it was coming out, and I was thinking, okay, I just missed my first name. But this is Big Discussions uh, 76 Sports, and I want to I wanted to make a short video adding on to something that I touched upon in the last video discussing whether or not head coach Jim Harbaugh could actually or can actually coach. Um, please like the video, please share it, and please uh, subscribe to the channel uh, and help it grow. I want to thank all of you uh, passionate, rabid um, Michigan football fans. I was thinking of another adjective there, but we can go with passionate and rabid. Um, I want to thank all of you passionate and rabid Michigan football fans who have supported this channel thus far and uh, helped it grow um, because it's growing much faster than my original channel. So in the last video, uh, I went a little longer than I wanted to and I left something out. Sometimes you, you know, I throw these points on, on paper and when I actually get to talking, the video goes a little longer and sometimes you get off on these tangents. But there's something that I wanted to pull out of that discussion and just talk about on its own that I think is worth revisiting when we think about our criticisms of Jimmy and his staff. And I wanted to say that uh, Coach Harbaugh's tenure has been uh, plagued by injuries and some bad luck. Now, we know that football, the game of football, um, you know, injuries are a part of the game of football, and they're a part of athletics in general, unfortunately. Sometimes teams win based upon another team getting hurt, and sometimes teams lose based upon their key players getting injured. And it's just a part of athletics, and, you know, history, oftentimes history never remembers the injuries, just the final outcome. And oftentimes the the passionate, rabid fans never care about the injuries, just the final outcome. So no injury has been more harmful to the Jim Harbaugh era than that of Grant Newsom. And so for those of you who, of course I'm sure all of you remember who Grant Newsom was, but in that pivotal 2016 season, which in the last video I said was Jim's best chance to win the Big Ten East and then to get us into the Big Ten Championship game and then perhaps into the playoff. That was his best chance to do it with some of Brady Hoke's players and just as he was adding in his own new players. One of the crushing injuries to that season was offensive tackle Grant Newsom. Grant Newsom, what, he was about 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, uh, you know, maybe 300 pounds, if not close to it, and Grant was a prototype offensive tackle who could do everything. He could pass block, he could run block, and he loved run blocking and he was already being projected as a first round NFL draft pick and I think it was against um, it was one of the early opponents maybe uh, Air Force I think it was Air Force when he suffered a very very gruesome knee injury which took him out for the rest of the season and in which he almost lost his leg 
and he they were um, miraculously <clears throat> able to save his leg, but Grant was never able to come back uh, and play after that. And it's been documented that uh, he has no regrets about it, and he would do it over again, but he was such a significant player that uh, he's been documented and John U. Bacon spent a portion of his talk talking about Grant Newsom uh, when he came to uh, came to DC to talk about his latest book about two months ago. So the impact of Grant Newsom, let's just talk about that briefly. Um, in the previous video I talked about the one weakness or one of the, the few weaknesses of the 2016 team, the team that lost that gut-wrenching loss, that suffered that gut-wrenching loss to Ohio State off that JT Barrett uh, first down, that phantom first down. The one weakness of that team was that it could not close out opponents on the ground late in games. So when I look back at that team, Davion Smith was getting the majority of the carries but that, but the running game didn't have that that pop. It didn't have that explosion. Um, part of that, I don't think Davion was a, um, and I'm not knocking the kid, but I don't think he was a a game changer, all purpose running back. Uh, I think he got the nod because he was the most senior, and he was the best uh, pass protector of, of all the running backs. I think he got the nod for that. I also think it was the offensive line. The offensive line, late in games, was unable to move the opposing defensive line and linebackers so that we could get first downs. And I think that um, we saw that down in Iowa City, and we saw that down in the snake pit against uh, Ohio. And I think that was the Achilles heel of that team. And so you, when you think about Grant Newsom and his physical ability and his um, football IQ and his just his physical prowess, you have to believe that if he were healthy, that would not have been a problem. Wilton Spade would have been able to hand the ball off to Davian Smith or whoever else was back there with him, and we would have been able to move the chains in key situations and also kill the clock. But because we were unable to move the ball on the ground um, in numerous situations, Wilton Spate had to drop back and he had to try to hit Amar Darbo or Jake Budd or Jay Hutchison or Grant Perry or one of the other receivers late in games to try to kill the clock. And we were unable to, to do that against Iowa and um, against Ohio State. So that's a key, a key injury that has impacted the entire trajectory of the program. I mean, because if that's there, then yeah, Jim beats Iowa, Jim probably beats Ohio State, and that monkey isn't on, isn't on his back for the next three to four years. So that's a key injury. Uh, Wilton Spate, you know, we know that Wilton Spate had a great year in 2016 up until he, he uh, broke his collarbone. He wasn't the same quarterback after that, um, that season, and it seemed as though he wasn't the same quarterback the next year. Um, and then he, um, against Purdue, Purdue sacked him and he um, uh, broke some of the vertebrae in his back. So he was done for the season. Tariq Black broke his foot as a freshman. So he was gone for pretty much all of that year, um, his sophomore year, and then his junior year in 2018. He wasn't a factor. Uh, Tariq wasn't ever a factor once he came back. Uh, Ryan Glasgow, uh, Jim's first year, Ryan Glasgow was inherited from the Brady Hope group. Uh, I think he broke his, his forearm in the, in the Michigan State game when we lost the punt and they returned it. But Ryan Glasgow was lost for the rest of the season. So our run defense was noticeably weaker for the second half of that season. So we had two nail biters against uh, Minnesota and Indiana. And then once uh, that Ohio State came into team, what came into town, I'm sorry, once that Ohio State team came into town with Ezekiel, Eli Ezekiel Elliott at running back, they were able to run all over us. Um, 
Brandon Peters got knocked out of the Wisconsin game in 2017. So he never had a, a, a real chance to take and grab hold of that starting quarterback position. And John O'Corn went back in and um, had us in position to beat Ohio State, but he threw that pick at the end of the game. Rashawn Gary, and Rashawn Gary has lots of critics. One of the most notable is my friend Aline Gaines. Uh, Rashawn Gary was out for most of his last year here at Michigan. And uh, in that 2018 Ohio State game where the game got away from us, our defensive players in that game started just dropping like flies. Chase Winovich, uh, Devin Bush, uh, Rashawn, all those guys went out and you can argue that being beaten like that perhaps broke their wills and maybe they, you know, just just lost their will to go on. So those are those are all players that uh, those are all key players that uh, you know Jim and the staff and we as the fan base um, we needed to play at a high level. Uh, they all got hurt at some point in uh, crucial moments in the season. And uh, those injuries were significant. You know, was it conditioning? Was it bad luck? Um, you know, who knows? But those, those injuries impacted the outcome. Going back to the last video in terms of whether or not Jim could coach, uh, a key for uh, any head coach is building depth so that if you suffer an injury, uh, another player can come right in and fill that gap. Um, I don't think Jim has been able to establish significant depth at all the positions at this point, uh, but that's something that's going to impact um, however much longer he stays going forward. And I know that many of the fans don't care about these little details. Uh, they just care about the wins, but, you know, the injuries are significant. And history... Ten years from now, when we're looking back at the these standings and the record books and who won and who didn't, uh, history probably won't care about the injuries. But injuries are a part of sport, a part of sports, and they are significant in terms of the overall outcome, um, regardless of whether or not we want to acknowledge them or not. So with that, I'm going to stop this video. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Please like this video, please share it, and please uh, subscribe to the channel. Always remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Go Blue!